Howdy! My name is Will, and as you know, I don't talk much on this channel. I like doing the silent videos because that way you get to experience the same peace that I experience while I'm out here. But a lot of you really loved my last behind the scenes video, so I thought we'd do one more and then we'll go back to the regular no talking videos for a while. I promised last time that we would talk about this big beautiful wagon, so let's start here. This is a Bain wagon built in Kenosha, Wisconsin. It's between 100 and 140 years old. And it was originally built as a grain wagon and used in Missouri. Uh, that's where I bought it. I found it on Craigslist. And I've done a lot to fix it up. And I did convert it into a covered wagon. Fixing this up was an amazing experience because I got to see firsthand the thought and engineering that goes into designing and building these. These wagons truly are a marvel of engineering. For one, these wagons are very modular. Uh, these right here are bolts that you can unscrew. And once you remove those, you can remove the entire front, which gives you greater access to the inside of the wagon. You can also remove these sideboards. Uh, this piece of wood is nailed into this one, but not this one. It slides into this piece of metal uh, the same way that these uh, wagon bows can slide in and out of these pieces of metal. Moving down a little bit, if you wanted to remove these bottom boards, it's a little bit more work. There's uh, 12 to 14 of these pieces of metal that are riveted to the wood, but they go down through the base and they're bolted on. So if you undid between 12 and maybe 16 of these bolts, uh, you could uh, remove, replace, fix uh, these bottom boards. But that's actually more work than you would need to do if you wanted to say haul a bunch of logs because this wagon box is not actually connected uh, to the wagon frame. I forgot the one place where the wagon box is attached is right here uh, with this chain. Going underneath, you can see a better view of how the box just rests on the frame of the wagon. So if you were to remove the entire box, this piece of wood would still be here with these rings. Uh, these are great tie down points, but you could also uh, get a long stake to put in here. And that way, if you're hauling logs, you can haul a tall stack of logs. And I love this seat. It has built-in springs, so as you're blazing a trail across the country, uh, it's a little bit more comfortable for you. And uh, just like everything else, you can uh, pretty easily remove it. It's just so cool. And these really were designed to be used. All of the sideboards had this metal railing on top. So if you're constantly putting stuff in and out of the wagon, you're not going to chip away at the edge of the wood here. And I love this chain that goes across. This keeps the wagon walls from bowing outwards. And you can easily undo it. Um, just move this ring. And... There you go. <laughs> this here is the parking brake. As you push the parking brake forward, it brings this metal rod forward. And as this metal rod goes forward, it pivots this piece of metal backwards, which pushes this whole thing and this block of wood into the wheel as the brake. And these blocks of wood, there's one on each side, and they just slide right out. So as you're traveling across the country and you wear out one brake, you can chop down a tree and carve yourself a whole new brake. 
One interesting flaw in a fix of these old wagons is that the front wheels, as they turn, they come backwards. And you can see right here, this rod has been shaved down over years of hard right turns. Even the wood right here has been shaved down. Now I've put a piece of angle iron here to help prevent that. But originally, uh, got a splinter. Uh, this, piece, this thick, meaty piece of metal uh, would have been right here. And you can see it has been worn down so much that it's cracked. This is the original uh, floor, and you can see it's a tongue and groove. And that's because to haul grain, they didn't want small pieces of grain to fall through the floor of the wagon. Also, this being a grain wagon, this front board and the one in the back have pieces of cloth attached to the bottom to fill in the gap so that you don't lose any grain. Let's say you're traveling across the country and you need to take off a wagon wheel in order to repair it. You would never want to do that while your horses are attached to the wagon because if they get spooked and run off, at the very least, you're going to destroy the wagon. And similar to how today many cars will not let you turn the car off, until you put the car in park. Uh, they designed something similar. So uh, this is just here for representation, but your horse team would be attached to uh, a board like this. And this right here is the wrench to take the nut off of your wagon wheel. So in order to get this wrench, you would undo your horse team. It solves the problem of a runaway wagon. I love these old wagon wrenches. I've been able to find three of them and they're completely different sizes. So there must be no standard uh, nut size because this one, that is way too big. This one could work uh, and I could bend these to make them work and, and maybe they're just bent out of shape. Uh, but this one's the coolest. Uh, this is just one piece of steel folded over and this one works on some of the nuts, uh, but but not all but not all of them. Fun story: My great grandfather, when he was a teenager in the early 1900s, he had a job with one of these wagons where they would haul giant blocks of ice throughout New York City. And as they'd go through the streets, women would call out from their apartments that they needed ice and what size. And he would grab the blocks of ice out of the back of the wagon and carry it up to their apartments. And there's no elevators at that time. So he was a very strong man. And one day someone watched as he took a wagon wheel off of a wagon and he did so without a wrench. He just grabbed it with his bare hands and with that grip strength, he was able to undo the nut. That man was a plumber. And you have to remember, uh, in the early 1900s, plumbing, like plumbing pipes, they were cast iron or lead. And bathtubs were cast iron, like heavy, heavy things. So he hired my great grandfather as an apprentice. So he was a plumber's apprentice for many years and then World War I happened. He joined the military and was excited to go to Europe and fight with his buddies, but it turned out the military held him back to do plumbing on one of the military bases. Um, the story is he was devastated by that and then found out months later that the ship he was supposed to be on sank and all of his buddies were killed. Sad story, but it's one of the reasons why I'm here today. One of the reasons to take off the wheel of a wagon is to grease the hub. And for that, they would have something like this. This is a grease dog. It's a piece of carved wood and that held grease. For these wagons, the grease dogs are often buckets that they would hang underneath the wagon. I was so excited when I found this hidden in the corner of an antique shop. If you're gonna take off a wagon wheel, you need to jack the wheel up and this is a wagon jack. It works by putting the axle on one of these steps. And this is the same exact metal that's on the top of the running boards. You put the axle on one of these and crank it up. It locks into place and, and that's your jack. 
Uh, I'm not going to try it out because uh, this really isn't in the, uh, the best shape and, and I don't want to break it. Every wagon would have had one of these, but that is just so simple and so genius. I love these chuck boxes. I built this one, uh, none of it is original. And I really love the, the way the leg works on this. So it comes down and you can just adjust. It's a very simple adjustment to get this flat. And, oh, uh, we have another, let's see if anyone's home, mouse nest. So nobody is home, <laughs> but you can see the materials the mice have been using to make this nest. The white is from my towel that's inside the cabin. Uh, I can see cardboard. I think that is from just boxes of nails. And a lot of this brown material, that is from my ropes. The mice love turning my ropes into their nests. I've slowly been converting all of my natural fiber ropes into synthetic ropes. They look the same, but the mice obviously don't like chewing up the synthetic. And this is a British World War II tent stake. Um, I found these cheap online and thought they were pretty cool. So you can see this is really falling apart. And as soon as my workshop is done, I'm gonna remove this and I'll repurpose all the wood into new projects. I love this wagon so much. And I can see that in the two years that it's been here outside, it is slowly falling apart. The weather's getting to it, the sun's getting to it. Not badly, but it just, it pains my soul. So in this next year, I'd love to donate this to a museum, someplace that'll keep it safe and preserve it. And at the same time, let people enjoy it and take a look at it and see it for the marvel that it really is. But I just can't imagine making these videos without a wagon. So let's talk about the workshop. There will be an indoor and an outdoor area all covered by one roof. The doorway will be here. And from here to the wall will all be workbench. There will be no wall right here, and that will allow me to work on the workbench from both sides. So last spring I tried farming, and it was a complete failure. I blame a lot of that on the weather. We had 19 inches of rain in one month. It was the most rain Oklahoma has had in the month of April since I believe the 1920s. Then after that we had two or three months of no rain at all. So it's no wonder the crops failed, but if I was a homesteader in the 1800s, you have to expect that these things are gonna happen and maybe I should try to make my living in a different way. So that's partly why I'm making this workshop. I wanna try my hand at leather tooling and blacksmithing, pottery, and another project I would absolutely love to do is build a brand new wagon. You can go on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist and you can find these wagons that are in absolutely terrible shape. They've been left to rot as yard art. So I'd love to get one of those wagons that really has no value at all. I'll bring that back to life and leave that out here for it to slowly deteriorate. And that way, this historic wagon that I have, that can go to a museum and be preserved for history. It is a cold and windy day today. So there will not be a wall here. And this will allow me to get a lot of good, easy camera angles when I'm filming. But I will have just a large shutter. It'll hinge at the top, lock up there somewhere. And that'll allow me to close the place up when I'm not here, keep everything safe. Nothing that I leave out here is that valuable, but a lot of it would be very difficult to replace. Fun facts about these wagons. The canvas covers would have been waterproofed using linseed oil, and the pioneers would often sew pockets to the canvas for better organization. And if you can imagine being a part of a large wagon train, there could be 
dozens or a hundred identical wagons to yours, how do you tell them apart? A lot of the pioneers would write things on their canvas or paint them. They'd write things like Oregon or bust. And that way, if you leave the wagon to go out, get water, firewood, hunt game, when you come back, you can easily spot which is your wagon. In the 1800s, America didn't have as many trees as there are today. So you can imagine if you're traveling across the plains, there's not a whole lot of firewood. So what the pioneers would do is they would stretch a buffalo hide underneath the wagon. And that way, as they traveled, if they saw a piece of wood or a buffalo chip, they'd have a place to store it. And a buffalo chip, if you didn't know, is dried up dung. It's basically a brick of grass that you can burn like a log. I have a couple buffalo chips that I'd like to burn, but I just can't imagine cooking with that. You've probably seen these barrels strapped to the outside of wagons where they would store their drinking water. But what you probably don't know is that this is also where they would store their meat. When the pioneers were traveling across the country, if they happened to see a small game and shot it, they wouldn't have time to cook it right then and there. So they'd skin it and throw the meat in their drinking water where it was at least a little bit cooler and the meat would last a little bit longer. And then at the end of the day when they stopped to make camp, that's when they would cook it. But I can't imagine what that drinking water would have tasted like. So these wagons are about 11 feet long, and I read one story about a pioneer couple who got to their destination, they built a beautiful cabin, and they wanted beautiful doors to go along with it. And the only good wood they had was the sideboards to their wagon box. So they took them off and cut them down, and with that they made a six foot front door and a five foot back door. I could never do that to this wagon. If you have any fun facts or stories you'd like to share about these old wagons, please put them in the comments below. I love reading your comments and I learn so much from them. It'll be a little while before I do another talking video. I prefer to do the no talking ones, but the next talking video will be all about the cabin, everything you ever wanted to know about dugouts, sod homes, pioneer cabins. That'll be the next one. And thank you so much for watching. I can't tell you how much I love making these videos and I couldn't do it without your support. So truly, deeply from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for your support. Please give the video a like, consider subscribing. And remember, if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. But whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Now, if you'll excuse me, that's a sunset. This is a cowboy hat. I'm obligated to walk into it. I'll see you on down the trail. Whoa. Almost did the splits. Airplane. Another airplane. Another airplane. I can hear it coming and it's only gonna get louder and there will be no wall right here. And this is so I can work on the workbench from, <sighs> there's another airplane coming. There's another plane. There's something about, some days you can just hear every plane. And today is one of those days. I hear a helicopter and I'm worried it's coming this way. Go the other way. Is that another plane? Oh, the planes today. It's cold. My hands. Come on, plane, go away. That is another airplane. I can't believe it. How many airplanes are there going to be today? <laughs>